everybody stand. Let's turn to page number 145. Oh, come all ye faithful as we stand together. greatest song Christmas songs ever been written right there and by the way that's what Christmas is about and that's what church is about and and on uh, that that's what our life should be about amen oh come let us adore him and by the way he is worthy to be adored amen and he's worthy to be thanked and praised we're so, so delighted that you're here we we have a vast amount of sickness and that's why the empty places people are not well several not well some in the balcony whose family are not well, but that's why they're in the balcony. So, but nonetheless, we appreciate all of you being here, especially our visitors as well. Right now, Brother Nathan Jackson is going to open us in prayer. Brother Nathan. Lord, thank you for another opportunity to be in church, Lord. Thank you for this good Sunday morning, Lord. Lord, thank you for the song that the choir sung, Lord. I pray that you'd uh, be with us as we continue to sing, Lord. Be with the preaching hour, Lord. Lord, help us to remember the reason for the season. Y'all get caught up in the commercial aspects, Lord. And again, thank you for the help to make it to church tonight, Lord. Pray that you be the service brings back safely tonight. In your name we pray, amen. All right, thank you. You may be seated all over the building. Uh, thank you again for coming. We'll be back tonight, the Lord willing, at 6 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. We'll be back also Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We'd be honored to have you at 7 o'clock uh, during the midweek prayer service, all right? Remember, uh, this Friday, the 15th, is the last cutoff day for the blanket drive for the Miracle Hill uh, Outreach Ministry. So if you have any blankets to purchase or buy or bring, then uh, bring them here before this Friday. That'll be the cutoff date, all right? And also remember this year, Christmas Eve, it will be the December the 24th. You, are, you all are aware of that. And we have made the decision to have one service that morning. That will be 10 a.m. And then we'll let you be free for the rest of the day to be with family and enjoy fellowship and things like that. Many, many people have get-togethers on Christmas Eve. So we'll have one service on December 24th, and we've done this before, and we absolutely had a packed house. We really did. Everybody came, and we want you to come, all right? We want you to come, make plans to come, and be a part of that December 24th service, all right? All right, now remember school uh, school break. Is this uh, school, yeah, break starts this Friday with a half a day, all right? Half a day this Friday for the Mountain View Christian Academy. And then the class is going to resume uh, to, in, not until January 3rd. So I know the children will be thrilled and delighted about that. Let's have the ushers come on down. We'll get the regular tithe and regular offering. This prayer request has is, um, is been spoken to me a couple times. Some of you know, have never met this man. Many, many in this church have known this man for years and years and years. And we just recently found out that uh, he has cancer. And I thought it was brain, but then I was told today it's brain and lung. So uh, I'm not completely sure about the diagnosis, but his name is Mr. Alan Walker, okay? But many of you know him. His mom and, and, and his wife ran the little, uh, the Red Rooster for years and years and years. Alan worked there as well. So they really would like for us to pray 
for Alan Walker, all right? God bless you. The choir's going to sing. You worship in your giving today, all right? And we've got plenty of bulletins. copies of the new church directory available. There's some here maybe on the side tables. We, if we need more, we'll get more. But if you would like a copy of the printed portion of the church directory, then you feel free to get one. They are free. It won't cost you anything. If you're looking for your cushion, your throw, your blanket, your Tupperware dish to feed the little ones or whatever, uh, your purse, anything, your Bible, uh, all that was taken up Thursday night during the Christmas extravaganza here at the, at the church, and so all of that is in the first room on the right. Uh, we did not throw anything away. They picked it all up because of the massive crowd that was in here Thursday night, all right? So keep that in mind and get your stuff right after the service. All right, Brother Jared, come on up here, Brother Jared. I'm not sure everybody knows this or not, and I think I'm right. Uh, you are the new mayor, right? Come here, come here, man, I tell you. I don't get to meet many politicians, all right? And uh, he's a Republican politician, right? You're not Democrat. If, if you're a Democrat, can we throw you out? Sure. Yeah, we throw him out. But uh, this is the mayor of Cowpen. So here's what, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That's all right, go ahead. That's it. Now, in, in layman's terms, here's what that means. That means that, you know, if you're in a hurry one day and you've got to get to Walmart, you've got to go meet somebody, got a doctor's appointment, and you're speeding through Cowpen and you get pulled over, don't worry about it. Uh, I know the mayor, <laughs> and I know a police officer. So, uh, yeah, I hope, will that work? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. All right, I want him to pray. I'm just kidding, sort of, kind of. I'm not kidding much. Pray for us, all right? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us and saving us, dear Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be back in your house this morning, dear Lord. Pray that you'd bless this service, dear Lord. The singing, everything, anybody that has any involvement in the service today, dear Lord, I pray that you'd help them. I pray that you'd help our man of God, dear Lord, to preach today, dear Lord, give him liberty. Help him, dear Lord, I pray we love you. We thank you for these tithes and offerings. Pray that you just bless us through the remainder of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Choir's going to sing. I'd like to welcome Elizabeth and uh, I think that's Paisley Russo up on the balcony, all the way from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We're delighted you're here. They are uh, guests of Ron and Melissa Shorey. God bless you, brother and sister Shorey. Appreciate you bringing these folks, and you're more than welcome here at Mountain View Baptist Church. Y'all sing choir.
the very thought of Jesus. Those earthly treasures, they grow strangely dim, and all my longing and all my searching, well, I Cross the aisle, shake hands with those around you, okay? Cross the aisle, everybody. Let's fellowship a little bit. Burgess, you can come on up to the choir. a great song that's always been a favorite around here and uh the reason our brother is in the uh, balcony singing from the balcony is because his wife has been diagnosed with covid and so all the families up there but i appreciate y'all coming on to church god bless you thank you for playing it safe and all that better than staying at the house amen thank you for coming others that are not well but we're glad they're here in the balcony how many glad to be saved today amen well, aren't you aren't you thankful that number one you're not in hell aren't you thankful you're not in jail aren't you thankful you live in the united states of america i know i know it's got all kinds of faults but it's still the greatest country on the sun on, on earth amen we got freedom listen when i came in this morning there wasn't nobody out there with no ak-47 there wasn't no there wasn't no muslim gonna cut my head off i just walked right in brother Randy, with my bible 
if God, if God helps us, we'll be able to do that for until he comes. Amen. I hope we can until he comes. All right. All right. We got some singers. Y'all ready? Uh, come on, Brother Burgess. I love this man. Such a great blessing. Uh, we support him. He's a missionary to the, to the handicapped, to the disabled. Goes in all of these facilities. This brother, his wife and family, they go in all these facilities and minister to all these people. By the way, Brother Burgess, we've got you on our back new mission board. I saw it a little while ago. Brother Douglas, God bless you, working hard to get everybody uploaded on that mission board. But uh, for the past three months, his son Samuel's been pretty sick, real sick. And so uh, still not out of the woods and just a lot of things going on. But you pray for Samuel. That's his boy that he's brought many times here to the church house with us. But this man, when we get to heaven, about, about eight or nine miles, where how it's going to be expansive, but eight or nine miles, you'll be able to hear a voice way, way over there. And say, hey, I know who that is. I'm the, and it's going to be him, all right? There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face. to bear, no more sickness nor pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me, what a day, glorious day that will be, everybody let's sing it now, what a day. Jesus I shall see, and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. One more time. What a day. My Jesus I shall see, and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. I appreciate, I think it was the Willing Workers Sunday School class. Uh, I know it was. The Willing Workers Sunday School class just a few months back came forward with money, and this is one of the brothers that you helped, and I know he appreciates. Matter of fact, he sent card, a card of thanks and appreciation to the Willing Workers Sunday School class. So God bless you, uh, a, a ministry well, well worthy of our support, all right? God bless you. Now listen, when we get to heaven, by the way, you know, you're going to hear George Beverly Shea, and then you're going to hear him, all right? Because I've heard both of them, all right? Y'all ready? Come on, sing for us. I love the Lord, and I love his word. And I know that he died for my sin. But there still are times 
in this life of mine when I need to hear it all again. How that Jesus came down to men, shed his blood and he died for them. Tell me how he rose again. So tell me that story, how the king of all glory laid down his life for me. It's that story so precious and oh how it blesses. I think I want to hear it again. Tell me that story. God's only begotten, he's sometimes forgotten when things seem to go our way. But more and more I'm finding, sometimes I need reminding of just what he did on that day. How he suffered the shame and the agony endured the cross and humility and all because he loves someone like me so tell me that story how the king of all glory laid down his life for me it's that story so precious and oh how it blesses i think i want to hear King of all glory laid down his life for me. It's that story so precious and oh how it blesses. I think I want to hear it again. Tell me that story. I think I want to hear Tell me that story. Great, great. You say amen to that? We're going to preach the Lord will a little bit loud, Brother Philip. We're going to preach the Lord willing, and then we're going to dedicate Brother Nathan and Ashley's little baby boy Bowman. So that won't take us long, but we'll do that immediately at the end of the service. All right? Take the Bibles, everybody, and go to Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number two, I trust you have a copy of the scriptures this morning and you came to church in that fashion. And if those next to you do not, then you be sure to, especially uh, visitors, you be sure to share your copy of the word of God with them, all right? Luke chapter two, I enjoyed all the singing, I appreciate it. Uh, verse number one, <clears throat> very familiar passage of scripture. Let me straighten this coat out. Verse number one, and it came to pass in those days that, it went, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. I need a comment here. It's all, it, was a, it was a taxation, but it was also a census. So that's why they had to navigate or migrate to the city of their birth or the city of their origin. Ordinarily, you could have had a taxation and everybody stayed in their same location. But if you're going to do a census in that day and hour, they wanted to get an accurate count as to find out who will be giving tax. That's the purpose of all that. And by the way, government hadn't changed much. <laughs> Not much changed. Verse 4, and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David 
So he went back to his origin. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Verse 7 again, please. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I'm going to use that last phrase, a familiar passage of Scripture, a Christmas time passage of Scripture. The Bible uses the word them. Look at the Bible in verse number 7 again. There was no room for them. We're talking now about Mary, the mother. We're talking about Joseph, the dad, but yet not the dad that provided the seed. Somebody help me right there. We still believe in the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, untainted by man. Amen. Untainted by man. But here you have Mary, you have Joseph, but... You also have the baby, the baby that is just about to be born. And Josh, what, what, a, what a crime. What, a, um, what an affront to deity. The Bible said he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And by the way, he owns the hills. He's never been a debtor to any man. But yet, how ironic, how disrespectful, how almost hard to wrap your head around and understand that they had no room for them in the end. And I, I want to say to our audience this morning, is that not how we are? I also want to say to the audience, we don't want to be that way. But I think, Brother Kyle, what took place in this city of Bethlehem many, many years ago has be, is being repeated over and over and over again in the day and hour of which you and I live. God's people, it seems sometimes, have no room for him in their life. And, and, and I'll tell you this, and you know this is accurate, there are multitudes of unconverted, multitudes, Brother Burgess, of the unsaved, uh, they have no room for him. I, I want to put a commercial in right here and give God the glory and give God the praise that at 16 years old, everybody listening, at 16 years old, I felt the pull and the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God showing me, Brother Quentin, that I was lost, that I was undone, that I was without Christ, I was without God, I was without hope. And I am so glad, Brother Randy, that the High Sheriff of Glory uh, put the handcuffs of love and mercy on me and brought me to a place where I realized I needed the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm not saying this arrogantly or braggadociously, but thank God that March the 30th of 1976, I made room. Amen. And I'm so glad. I, I've never regretted it. I said I've never regretted it. Hey, I'd do it all over again. I said I'd do it all over again. Thank God I wouldn't take nothing 
for my journey now. I'm glad as a human being, a lost sinner, an unconverted individual, thank God I opened the door of my heart and I let him in. Could I ask you something today? We're talking about Mary. We're talking about Joseph. But we're also, Brother Perry, talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords. For whom did they have no room? Watch this now. For whom did they have no room? Brother Brian, they had no room for him who was the desire of all nations. They had no room for him whom the prophets have foretold, who poets have sung about, and for whom holy men of old had been waiting in devout expectation. No room for the one who had come to open the eyes of the blind, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the bond slaves free. No room for the one who came to bring healing for the sick and pardon for the guilty and life for the dying and salvation to the lost. No room for who? No room for the king of glory who hath the name that is above every name. No room, friend, could be found but for the Lord of glory. And so now we find him as in the rest of his life he has no place to wear to lay his head. No place at all but to lay his head. But I'm glad in the providence of God and in the sovereign of God that God wanted Bethlehem to fulfill the prophecy of Micah chapter 5. Brother Stephen Long, God wanted all of this to happen. I said God wanted all this to happen so God could show us the accuracy and the authority and watch it and the inspiration of his Bible. Amen. I'm glad they had no room for him, friend, because you know why? I'll tell you why. Because the Bible said, for he who was rich became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. Thank God he came as a pauper. He came as a carpenter's son. I'm talking about the one that created the world. I spoke the world into existence. I put the mountains in the I'm the star and hung the moon. I'm talking about the one that said, let there be light, and there was light. Let the animals come forth, and they came forth. I'm talking about the one, dear friend, that allowed you and I uh, to come into this life, but yet they had no room for him. He's showing us humility. He's showing us lowliness. He's showing us poverty. Amen. He's showing us poverty. Amen. He's showing us the low road. Amen. He's the, by the way, Matthew said, the shepherd said, where is? He, Pilate said, he was born king of the Jews. All right. The shepherd said, he was born king of the Jews. And by the way, he was born king. And as being born king, you'd have thought there was a stately ivory bed. And you thought there was a palace wall. And you thought there was a palatial abode. And you thought there were servants and everybody all around. But Brother Randy, that wasn't the case. It was in a trough. Amen. It was in a feeding trough. Can you get it, church? How do you understand it, church? In the manger with the straw and the oxen are lowing and the, and the animals are bowing their head and the stars are shining and his star is standing over where he was later in the house. Hey, friend, I'm talking about how the miraculous, amen? I mean the supernatural, how the indescribable, how the undefinable how took place when the Son of God was born. I would want you to know and God had a purpose and God had a reason and God's scripture has come to pass that there was no room in the end. Amen. I tell you, I can't, I tell you what, let's go ahead and take our Bible. Uh, let, me, let me turn to a scripture. I feel like I just need to. If, if I can get it right, help me, Lord. Yes, go to 2 Corinthians chapter, nine, chapter 8. I think I've, uh, it's not in my notes, but I really feel like the Lord wants me to go here. Second Corinthians chapter number 8, we're talking about his birth. We're talking about poverty. Brother Steve Abbott, we're talking about the lowly birth, the, the, uh, the isolated birth. We're talking about the birth that fulfilled prophecy of Micah chapter 5. We're talking about he has 
no place to where to lay his head. Here's what he said, by the way. He said, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. And that started here in Bethlehem. No room in the end. Nobody could give up a room. Nobody would surrender their space. Nobody would let him in. Nobody would make different plans. Nobody would adjust their plans. Nobody would say, come on in to a pregnant mother. That's right at nine months being born. Oh, friend, what, a, what, a, what an affront to the God Almighty. But yet, God wanted it that way. And here's why he wanted it that way. 2 Corinthians, if you're there, say amen. Look at chapter number 8, and I want you to read together with me verse number 9. Here, I didn't get the first part. For ye know, man, this is shouting ground right here. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, amen, though he was rich, yet for your sakes, somebody ought to say amen right there. Yet for your sakes, I love it, he became poor. But what for, Brother Perry? That ye through his poverty might be rich. Hey, friend, look up here. Shake hands with a poor boy who owns everything. My father owns it all. My elder brother owns it all. Oh, but thank God 2,000 plus years ago, he left the glory of heaven. He left the riches of heaven. He left the splendor of heaven. He left the worship. Hey, he left the worship of heaven. And he came down to this earth and was born in a lowly manger. And by the way, he did it because he wanted to manifest the grace of God. I'm so glad for grace. And by the way, that's why John Newton said, grace, oh, I got another word for it. It's amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Look blind, but now I see. When we've been there 10,000 years, how bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Friend, I want to tell you, grace is marvelous. Amen. And grace is amazing. And grace is transcending. And grace is captivating. And grace is powerful and grace is available amen i need to preach that grace is available it's available for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself it is the gift of god go back to luke chapter 2 go back to luke 2 please luke chapter 2 when i look at the manger scene when i look at the lowly birth and i look at the rejection of the baby Jesus and all I see is a God in heaven writing a story a story that knows no rival a story that cannot be duplicated amen cannot be duplicated let's look up here a story that's changed my life a story brother Nathan that's changed my this little story this little story that was the start of it all. Oh, by the way, by the way, the birth isn't all that happened. I said the birth isn't all that happened. Thank God for his life. Thank God for his death. Thank God for his burial. Thank God for his resurrection. Thank God for his ascension. And thank God for his high priestly ministry. And he sits on high interceding for you and I right now. And thank God one day he's coming to get me. And he's coming to get you. I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad I'm a Christian. I'm so glad my sins are forgiven. I'm so glad this little earthly story, this little humble beginning, I said, this earthly story this humble beginning thank god it has transformative power amen i say to our visitors today i say to any among us any among us brother bennett that are unsaved i say to you today he is more than a baby in a manger amen he is more than a baby in a manger that was only the beginning and by the way by the way can it be said Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, can it be said about you, sir, that you have no room for him? Can it be said about you, ma'am, 
You have no room for him. I'm talking about the dearest friend that you could ever have. I'm talking about the best thing that could ever happen to you. I'm talking about peace in your heart and joy in your life and satisfaction and contentment in your life. I'm talking about the gift of eternal life and the gift of the grace of God. I'm talking about God's grace being made available. And it all started here, way before here. But earthly speaking, it started in a manger in Bethlehem. And I want to ask you today, have you let that story transform? transform your life? Have you accepted that story? Have you repented of your sin? Have you confessed Christ? Are you truly a Christian? Are you born again? Are you washed in the blood? Have your sins been forgiven? Are you thankful for Jesus? Are you thankful for the Bible? Are you thankful for the grace of God? Yes, yes, there was a birth. I say yes, there was a birth. But friend, thank God there was a death. Amen. Thank God there was a death, and thank God there was a burial, but hallelujah, hallelujah, thank God there was a resurrection. There was a resurrection, and thank God there was an ascension, and thank God he's our high priest, and thank God he's coming back to take his church home. Please, please, please don't let it be said about you that you have no room for this Christ child. You have no room in your life. You have no room in your mind. You have no room in your heart. You have no room in your spirit. You have no room in your future. You have no room in your present. You can't do anything about your past, but could it not, let it not be said, let it not be said that you have no room for him now and you have no room for him tomorrow. And you have no room for him to, uh, next year. And let it never be said, let it never be said, sir, that you had no room for him the entirety of your life. Because when you draw your last breath, you'll draw your last breath and you'll wake up in a Christless place called hell. And you'll be wringing your hands. You'll be wringing your hands and you'll be screaming and you'll be hearing blood curdling scream where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched and your soul will never be exterminated. It will never perish. Amen, everybody. It will never be, here's the word, it will never be annihilated and you will spend year after year after year after year after year through all of eternity in the place called hell and which that which will echo in your heart and your mind is I had no room for him. If I were here in this building this morning and I heard all this good singing and I've seen the love of this congregation and I've seen the happiness of this congregation and Brother Randy Jr., the joy of this congregation and the amens to the word of God and the preacher getting up, opening up a clear presentation of the old, old Christmas story. If I was in this building today and I didn't know beyond any shadow of a doubt that I was going to heaven when I die, I tell you, I'd get in this altar, I'd get up from my pew, I'd stop the service if I had to, I'd come down here. I'm telling you why, friend, uh, because the world's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. It only means one thing, Brother David. It only means one thing. He's coming back. Amen. He's coming back, Brother Chris, and we're the only reason. Amen. I said he's coming back, and we're the only reason. But you go all your life, and you put him aside, and you shove him aside, and you have no room for it, and you keep the door closed, or you slam the door, or you shut the door, or you just say, I have no time for that. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to entertain that. I have no time for salvation. I have no time for the blood of Christ. I have no time for the Christmas story. I'm telling you, friend, you'll be the loser. You'll be the loser, friend. You'll be the loser because you're going to wake up in hell. You're going to wake up in hell. Somebody amen the preacher. You're going to wake up in hell and you're going to wish to God a thousand times. You're going to wish to God a thousand times that you'd have made room for him. Of all those, stay with me, okay? Of all those, let me get a little water. I need to read real plain what I'm fixing to read. I am going to read it. I mean, I'll, I'll recite it, but give me water. Give me money. This is 
is so important. I tell you, you preachers and you Sunday school teachers, you know how the Lord will just keep you in the current. He'll just keep you in the current. And I think, I think right now, Brother Chris, I'm in the current. And I wasn't going to use this, but now I keep on coming back to it, but I need to use it. And so we're going to use it. Listen, of all those who exclude Jesus Christ from their life, I'm talking about no room for him in the end. No room in your heart. No room in your life. No room for salvation. No room, room for the forgiveness. Who wouldn't want forgiveness of sins? you talking about a Christmas gift. Belks don't have anything like it. Home Depot doesn't have anything like it. Uh, 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 Cole's department store doesn't have anything like it. You're talking about the forgiveness of your sin and eternal life to live forever with God in heaven. Thank God the assurance and thank God the peace and thank God the joy of being a Christian. No, no, better, no better Christmas gift anywhere. By the way, it's free. It's free. Come without money. Come without price. Come as you are, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Come just like you are, sir, a lost sinner. Amen. But of all those who fulfill verse 7, who said there was no room for Christ in my life, perhaps the, the most numerous and the most guiltiest are they who recognize in his claims and his powers refuse to welcome him into their hearts. And I know this, I'm going to read your title clear. You listen, whoever you are. Their lives are so crowded with cares, with the business of the market, or the business of a job, or the business of your household, or they're filled up with pleasure. Filled up with pleasure. And the prizes of this world, the prizes of this world, or they are so occupied with their own pursuits, their own pursuits, which if those pursuits are intellectual only and they're unspiritual, they'll have no room for the divine one who comes to speak of sin and of mercy and of life, which is spiritual and eternal, who claims to be the trusted and loved and served as the Savior of the human soul. I love this right here, Brother Brian. And the sovereign of the human life. Could I give you that again? He's the Savior of the human soul, and he's the sovereign of the human life. Amen. He's my master. He's my Lord. He's my king. He's my God. He's the dearest friend I've ever known. He's the lily of every valley that I have. He's the anchor in my storm. Amen. Thank God he's my ever-present comforter. Do you know him? Do you have time for him? Have you let him in? Have you trusted him? Uh, please don't be like the end of Bethlehem and say unto God and say to the Bible and say to the Christ of Calvary, I have no room for him. Don't do that. Don't fulfill that. Don't let that be you. So while some of you admit his right to enter, Brother Brian, they admit his right to enter, but Brother Derek, they never open the door. Alas, what enlightening truth, what blessed restfulness of heart, what nobility, I love that, what nobility of life, what eternity of glory do men sacrifice and give up by crowding out the Lord who loves them, by excluding the Redeemer, by excluding the Redeemer from the home of their hearts. I don't know a lot. 
I know one thing. I've made my heart his home. I've made my heart his dwelling place. I don't want to die mainly because I'd leave my dear wife, I'd leave my four grown children, I'd leave my four grown married in-laws, daughter-in-laws, sons-in-laws, I'd leave uh, 10 or 11 or 12 sweet, precious little grandchildren. Oh, I'd leave this congregation. I'd leave people. It's wonderful to be loved, amen. I'd, read a, I'd leave a bunch of people that love me. I, I think they really do love me. And they've proved that and they support me and they don't tie the chains around me while I try to preach and they don't tether my tongue, say amen. Matter of fact, they want, they want all the tethers cut, amen. They want the chain broke to let her rip and go. They like farming around here. What do you mean drop the plow, amen, drop the plow. Preach the word. So some preachers can't preach because of the congregation, but it's not that way here. I'm loved here. I'm loved. And, and I know that I'm loved, but yeah, and I don't want to leave. I don't want to die. I don't want to die today. I don't want to die tonight. But, 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 if unexpectedly, if unexpectedly, my number's called. Jason, my time has come. Whatever way it comes, I promise you this, I'm not afraid to die. I don't, I don't want to go up to the hospital, sit up there for three or four or five months, and everybody come crying, me crying, and them crying, and doctors just shaking. I don't want to go through all that if I can help it. But if I do, if I do, it's okay. It's okay. This is 16 years old. 16 years old, I made sure, I made sure, Miss Douglas, I was ready to go. Do you have room for him? Have you taken room for him? Let me just drop this in since there's a little bit of plowing going on here. Do, do you have any room this Christmas season? Are you making any room this Christmas season? Have you, made enough, have you made enough room for him that you've got the salvation of your soul nailed down? Let, let, me, just, let me put it to you like this, because I, I, I'm, try, I'm trying, church. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to, to edify, but God have mercy. I do not know why I keep being evangelistic. So here's what I want to do right now. If you were to die today, sir, young lady, if you were to die, and they told us this, Brother, Brother Douglas, they told us this in Bible college, and I've never forgot it. I don't mean everybody has to use it. I don't mean that everybody needs to be the same way, but it's a very great one-on-one -on -one at somebody's door talking to them. They call it evangelism explosion by James Kennedy, who used to be Anita Bryant's pastor, who was also a priest in Moreland, Mississippi. Remember him? James Kennedy. You know what he said? Here's what he said. I think no, I might be wrong on my name. Uh, it's the other man, Anita Bryant's pastor. Bill Chapman, okay, it, it, it was Kennedy then. Okay, but Chapman's a great one too. He, here's the thing, here's the thing. Here's what they taught us, and here's what I want to ask you. If you were to die today and stand before God, and God were to say to you, why should I let you into my heaven? Yeah. What would your answer be? That's, right. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And so I want to ask this congregation, if you were to die today, and stand before a holy God, and that holy God were to look only at you, not anybody else, only at you, and say to you, why should I let you into my heaven? And I want to tell you this from the Bible, there's only one answer. You say, well, what, well what's the answer? Oh, it's very simple. It's very simple. I had room for him. I had room for him. Did you know that somebody owned that inn? I'm finishing about three minutes. It's, it's not even 12. I'm finishing about three minutes. Do you know, Brother Carl, somebody owned that inn? Well, the owner did have no room for him. 
Do you know, Brother Randy, several probably worked at that end, but those that worked had no room for him. Did you know, and I know this is true, I know this is true, do you know that several were staying at that end because there was no room for them? Several were staying, but yet, Brother Kevin, of all the people that were staying, they had no room for him. Did you know that some were enjoying, listen to this, listen to this, some Brother Kitchen, Miss Kitchen, some were enjoying their stay in that end. What do you mean by that? Well, the host, no doubt, that's in Luke 10, the, it, I'll pay you two pence, and to host, so a lot of the inns had a host. The host provided beverage and food, a refuge from thieves, a shelter from the heat and cold, from the dust, a place where man and his beast may lodge, where a trader may sell his wares, a pilgrim may satisfy his hunger and thirst. Some even had towers, which a watcher might man the tower to warn the guests of the approach of marauding bands. And so some were enjoying, they were enjoying their stay at that end, out from the dust, out from the elements. But yet, Josh, as much as they enjoyed it, they had no room for the Christ child. I'm convinced, Brother Pearson, that some had their family in that end. But yet, as a family, you would think, Brother Brian, that as a family, somebody say, oh, my, look at her. She's going to have that baby any moment. She's going to have that child any moment. We cannot send her out back where the animals are stalled and fed and, and watered to the trough, to the mangers. We can't put her out in the straw. With, and some people believe it could have been in the very middle. You have to look at all that. Could have been the very middle. The common area is where they kept the beast. So we're not going to get into all that. But Brother Burgess, you would think that maybe one family would go to the innkeeper and say, Sir, if it's all right, listen, me and my family, we'll, we'll, we'll go around back. And, and or, or we'll, we'll, we'll get our journey back on, on the road. Let that little precious family come and let's make room for them. But I'm convinced, Brother Derek, that some had their family, but not one family nope. had room for him. I'm, I'm convinced, Brother Trey, that it was a well, and I could prove some of this later, it was a well-known travel route, a well-known travel route, and I'm sure that some stayed there often, so they had their friends there. But Brother Chris, you would think that maybe one or two of the friends just say, come on, let's, we, we, can, we can rough it out back. Some of the friends could say, come on, we, we could go around back. We'll, we'll, we'll sleep in the fodder. We'll, we'll sleep with the hay. Come on, let these people in. But no room. You mean the owner, he had no room? You mean the workers, they had no room? You mean the people staying there because they're traveling because of the census and the taxation, it's all there. You mean they had no room, Brother Doug? You mean those that enjoyed the end, they had no room? You mean families had no room and friends had no room? Oh, yes, and we could go on and on and on. And don't throw rocks at them. Let's not put them under the bus. Let's not throw them out, to, out in the cold because you know why? Because there's one or two of you. And you have no room. And you're just as guilty. You've got a lot to answer for. But you have no room. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Christians are praying. I think you could say amen to the fact that the Lord helped us this morning. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. It's time for real honesty. Heads are bowed and our sister's playing. How many of you have made room for him? How many of you know beyond any shadow of a doubt? You've already made room for him concerning, concerning this, the salvation of your soul. You've made room for him by trusting him and asking him into your life. Would you raise your hand? Watch your place. Would you raise your hand? Okay, you may put them down. There's some that could not be raised, church. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. I wonder, mom, I wonder, sir. I wonder, boy or girl, I wonder, mom, grandfather, grandmother. I wonder, sir, can we pray for you today? I wonder, I wonder, sir, do you care enough that you're at least thinking about it, that you're at least thinking that pray for me, you know what, you're right, you're right. I need to make room for him. I, I, need, I need to settle the salvation matter. Would you lift your hand, let me pray for you. Would you lift your hand, let me pray for you, right, real quick. I won't embarrass you, I won't come to you, I won't call your name. I wanna pray for you, lift your hand real quick. Sir, how about it, sir? Do you care? Sir, are you concerned about your soul? 
They're concerned about eternity. Don't be like what I just preached. They had no room. They had no room. Don't do that. Don't do that. I just want to pray for you. Would you lift your hand? Would you lift your hand? Dear God in heaven, we only, only could ask, Lord, that you deepen conviction, that you'd arrest people's attention, arrest their mind, and show them their great need of the Savior. Bless as we sing now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're singing what number? Page 340.